If you take a trip down College Drive, looking for leaders that vision, prepare, and build for the future, or teachers who continually pursue knowledge, pushing young minds to do the same, or students who are dedicated to their craft, committed to excellence, and ready to affect the world, if you take a trip down College Drive looking for these things, you've come to the right place. Louisiana College, unchanging foundations. Good day. I'm Dr. Randall Esters. I'm the Dean of Education at Louisiana College. The people you're going to see on this video are all practitioners. They've all been in the classroom. All the teachers have spent time in front of children and are experts at what they do. We feel like we've put together the best of the best. The teachers that you will see on this video have experienced what they're talking about. And we hope that you enjoy and learn a little bit from it. Teachers come in all shapes and sizes. They come from different backgrounds and cultures. They teach in a multitude of different settings to a multitude of different personalities, but all good teachers share qualities that make them exceptional in the field of education. What makes a good teacher is that a teacher always teaches. Good teacher, it's more than just a job. Um, they devote um, who they are to the lives of their students. That is key in teaching. Uh, I believe that teachers are born. I believe that you can have a student go through a, a school of education and make a high grade point average but be a very ineffective teacher. You, you wouldn't want a doctor operating on you who had no concern for your well-being if you recovered or not. You wouldn't want a teacher teaching you or teaching your children who didn't care about the outcome. Teaching is a very difficult job. It requires a lot of physical stamina, emotional stamina. The easiest thing to do in anything is to give up. Because many times you feel that your students aren't learning and that you're just spinning your wheels. I've seen kids who had no desire to learn. I've seen kids who were incorrigible relative to discipline. And I've also seen those same kids come back to me three, four, five, ten years later and thank me for staying with them. When you see the light come on in the child's eyes when they're learning, then you know that um, your job pays off. That's what keeps me going. Because there are days that you won't connect, that you are tired, um, that the kids are tired. Um, being able to walk through those times and be successful with uh, our students is very important. I think the key to uh, resilience is knowing that you have another day with those children and that you are seeking an end product which is success in the classroom um, and to learn to take a breather and to look at the day and say I just really did not feel good about this day with my kids but I have tomorrow and what do I need to change. Confidence a good teacher has confidence in her ability to teach and in the ability for the students to learn. Knowing your content and being well planned helps build this confidence. Also, setting high expectations for your students will give them confidence to learn. Uh, confidence is a very important um, attribute to have as a teacher because your confidence shows that you know what you're talking about and what you're saying and what you're teaching. And that confidence also uh, shows the students that you're confident that they have the ability to learn what you're teaching. So they trust you more in doing their work and uh, in the learning process. Kids are smarter than we think they are. Kids are more perceptive than we ever realize they are. If a teacher walks in with low self-esteem, not believing that they know what they're doing, the kids pick up on it instantly. Teaching has to capture uh, the heart of the teacher, the, uh, the willingness to lend yourself to a child, no matter uh, what age they are, two and a half to high school. 
there's a fine line between being confident and being overconfident. We need to be confident in that we know our material, we know how to teach it, and we know our kids. We don't need to be so overconfident that we forget that our kids do not know the information. If you walk in the classroom with a bad attitude, low confidence, uh, unorganized, your kids will have bad attitudes, low confidence. Whatever you do, they will mirror. Being flexible as a teacher is very important because you're dealing with people and a teacher should be very planned, um, ready for the day, materials organized. However, needs may arise where the teacher may have to adjust to meet um, the needs of the students and the situation at hand. Uh, we always have to remember that we're, we're teaching people and we're not um, teaching material, we're teaching the material to the student. Humor can make students feel comfortable and diffuse a stressful situation. Laughter and smiles create a positive learning environment. A sense of humor in the classroom um, is just as important as confidence. Well, a sense of humor is very important in the classroom. First of all, it shows that you're enjoying your job and that uh, teaching and learning can be fun, and it should be fun. A sense of humor also um, relaxes your students. Because you are with students seven to eight hours a day in an elementary setting, typically you're with those students more often than their parents are. It can also help um, with the behavior of the students because it, um, it causes them to relax and enjoy the environment. And we all know, if you're a parent, there are times that we look like idiots in front of our children and our kids do funny things and the ability to laugh together as a family is key. I go, yes, I have a jar in my office and I go around <laughs> randomly sprinkling it on <laughs> kids' heads. An effective educator is one that looks at their classroom as um, a family. And um, whether the educator is female or male, they need to assume the role of parent and they'll be an effective educator. Organization. A good teacher is very organized. The classroom is a learning environment. The classroom materials should be easy to get to and distribute to save time during the lessons. Anything worth doing is worth doing properly. Teachers have a tendency, once they've been in the classroom for many years, to think that they can walk in a classroom unprepared and get the job done. It's very important for a teacher to be organized because it helps with your time management and with the behavior of the classroom. The students know if the teacher is not ready for the day and if the teacher does not have good classroom management, the students tend to take control of that. If you know where your materials are and you're able to um, get them readily, then the, the students are um, on task more. In my class, I have certain procedures when the students come in the door. They know exactly what to write down, what to get out, and what to work on. Um, and then after that, I leave the class um, for the day and their objectives and what they're going to accomplish. They know when they're allowed to go to the bathroom when it's appropriate to get out of their seat. All of those things um, make a great classroom when it's organized and well thought out. Plan. Planning is the key to success in organization. When you have your classroom planned in such a way that you know where everything is, everything that you have in the classroom that you're going to need is in a place where you know you put it, then it saves time, it cuts down on the downtime, and then it gives you more time to focus on the learning strategies. If we can change just a little bit, change one little thing that we're doing to make ourselves better, it's effective. If you were to paint a picture of a teacher, um, I think the artist would render a heart.